Welcome! In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at the Frequency Splitter plugin in FL Studio. We'll consider the user interface, typical use cases, and some less obvious ones too. Frequency Splitter is designed to split audio into two or three bands with customizable crossover filters, adjust the level of these bands in the main output, and route them to separate outputs in parallel. Let's start with the interface, specifically the display section. This is where frequencies of the incoming audio are visualized using a spectrogram, heat map, or both. Optionally, the visualizer can monitor audio going out of the plugin. There are two output visualizations, one for the main output and one for the sidechain sends. These controls are for switching between input, main out and send output monitoring. It's important to understand the two signal paths. The main output handles audio that passes straight through the effect. In this case, the low, mid and high controls act just like an equalizer, raising and lowering the level of the bands. You can left click to mute or right click to solo the bands with these switches here. These will be important later when we set up sidechain send modes. The sends are a little more complicated. Destinations won't be available until you have created mixer track sends from Frequency Splitter's host track to at least one other mixer track. Normally, you would use sidechain sends. Otherwise, you'll get both main and sidechain audio arriving on the send tracks and also directly on Frequency Splitter's own mixer track. To stop the main output, either mute all of the main outputs in the plugin or unroute your host track from the master track. As for sends, right clicking the send boxes shows the name of the linked mixer tracks to make selection easier. Normally, these show numbers. Available sends are just listed from 1 and up. These are not the mixer track numbers, but just sends listed, where the lowest mixer track will be 1 and the highest 3, for example. In other words, you'll always see 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., regardless of the destination tracks. The band filter shapes are self explanatory. Change the slopes with this menu here. To simplify the band crossover visualizations, you can choose to show the band's and or overall frequency response curve from the main output section, the send output section, both, or do away with the bands altogether. Click and drag a band up or down to adjust its output level, depending on which bands are visible. Note that you can click on the line and drag it too. If you show both main out and send output bands, this will only adjust the send output bands as these are more important in most cases. You can also link the crossover cutoff knobs in 3 band mode with this control. When enabled, the band crossovers will move in tandem. Moving one moves the other by the same amount. This is helpful for sound design. For example, you can use the mid band as a bandpass filter. Okay, let's get into the power of Frequency Splitter. Why does it matter if we can split audio like this? Level ducking. Here I've sent the bands of my bass guitar to separate mixer tracks using sidechain routing and automated the low band send output on Frequency Splitter to duck in time with my drums. Mm -hmm. 
This acts like a more transparent form of sidechain compression, where the mids and highs are left untouched and only the lows get out of the way of bottom heavy drum sounds. No time using frequency splitter in linear phase mode as I don't want my bass to get smeared and I have the modulation speed set to the shortest available time so my critically time dependent automation matches the parameter movement as closely as possible. This uses more CPU than a slower modulation speed but results in more accurate automation timing. Another cool thing you can do with frequency splitter is multiband effects processing. That Rhodes is the perfect candidate for some band split effects processing. I'm going to enable the effects I've put on there. This frequency splitter also has its sends linked to discrete mixer tracks. Both sends, low and high, have stereo widening effects. The low end gets a chorus and the high end gets a harsh effect, chorus, reverb and delay. Since these effects are added in parallel, I can go a little bit more extreme with the widening. We're going to listen to the effects in solo right now, but there is a dry track in the mixer. Nice. That's far from all you can do with this plugin. You could do multiband transgating. Duck the mid frequencies of a track so the vocal comes through. If you text me, say you need me. Even if it ain't real, you're just missing me. I'll be on the way, we'll spin and get it free. I'll be here. Spend it. Do very steep filter sweeps. Use the main output levels as a broadband EQ and even remove vocals from a song, if you're lucky. And many more. But the most important and final use case I want to feature here is using frequency splitter in Patcher. One example that comes to mind instantly is mastering. Routing frequency splitter in patcher is easy as 1, 2, 3. Open an effect patcher. Load a frequency splitter. Then right click it inside patcher to add any outputs you need. And build your patch from there. The outputs you added in patcher will now be available as sidechain sends inside frequency splitter. Here I've built a typical multiband mastering chain. We have multiband compression and limiting, then multiband excitation or saturation, and multiband stereo imaging, ending with single band maximization. And it's all made possible by Frequency Splitter. This is where linear phase processing is often crucial to the result, as any additional phase shift from steep filters can create unwanted phasing artifacts across the spectrum. Setting your master up like this will give you the ability to tailor your master chain even more to your specific audio needs, and can certainly give you an edge over a traditional serial approach, even when using plugins that are internally multiband, since you can use this method with any plugins you have. By now, you probably get the idea. With Frequency Splitter, the possibilities are endless. I could keep showing examples all day long, but in the end, the best way to learn this plugin is to use it yourself. It's free with FL Studio 20.8 onward after all. Check the video information for a link to the Frequency Splitter manual page and a link for the demo project seen in this tutorial. I hope that this video helps you understand what Frequency Splitter is, and most importantly, why it exists. Now get to making some music using this new tool in your arsenal. First, maybe it's you, you're the one I love, you're the one I need, you're the only one I see, come on baby it's you, you're the one that gives your own.